All right, let's talk about the fine art of opening water bottles with swords. First off, why do we do something that seemingly silly? Well, because tatami mats are kind of pricey for something to just destroy, around 10 bucks a piece. That's a better practice tool, but it adds up quickly. Here's Eric doing a clean cut, you might say a decap, with his Shiavona made by Vladimir Serenka. And I'm doing a double cut with a Tai Chi saber. So how can you tell what's a good cut? To us it's self-evident because we've been practicing with swords for quite a while, but somebody else might not know what to look for. This is an example of an almost perfect cut. How can you tell? The top of the bottle is just falling off as opposed to being flung away. The bottom almost stays. There's very little movement. If the edge alignment is off, the bottle will topple over or even fly away. You can see I messed up my cut here because the top flies away and the bottom falls over. This one is better, as you can see it doesn't fall as far from the stand. And there Eric is showing off a nice smooth cut. The bottom halves are standing still and the tops just fall straight down. This cut with the fox is quite good. It also depends on where on the bottle you hit. If you're hitting it high up, it's more difficult because you don't have much mass above the cut and leverage works against you, making it more likely to tip the bottle. If you hit below the center, it's easier, but then you run the risk of accidentally hitting the stand. Here's an example of what happens when the edge alignment is significantly off. Basically, the edge is not pointing in the exact direction that the blade is traveling in. If the alignment is good, very little force is needed to make a clean cut. Tatami mats are different, they require more velocity. There's Eric doing a perfect cut while casually strolling around with his coffee. Such a show off. Another example of poor edge alignment, as you can tell by my grumpy face. And here's a near miss, shaving a micro sliver of plastic off the cap. There we go. Doing multiple cuts in succession smoothly is a lot more challenging because then you also have to adjust distance and all that. And there another casual, very nice cut. Going through two bottles that are further awake is also tricky because then two different parts of the blade connect. Here again, edge alignment is off. When it just explodes like that, you know something went wrong. And this is a perfect false edge cut. The bottle doesn't move. It's just the cap being launched away. If you cut so little off the top of the bottle, it'll always fly away. That's fine. Single-handed cut with a gallow glass. Almost perfect. It also depends on the stand. If the stand is uneven, of course, that makes things more difficult. Thomas does a nice controlled cut here. For practice, it's generally better to slow down a bit. Once the form is flawless, you can speed up. The cut was almost perfect here. Just nudge the bottles off. And these two are nice and smooth. On a thwarting cut like this, I still find the edge alignment challenging, but this one was nice. As I said, thwart cuts are challenging. In this case, it wasn't enough rotation. You'll see the next one has quite a bit more rotation, and that does better, but still knocking the bottle around. There was trying a fault edge cut. Kinda meh. Blender of death. Blender of Death, Eric Bailey, 2019. This is very challenging. A plunging cut with a false edge, followed by a downward cut. Quick undercut, I put way more force into it than needed. Look at how smooth this double cut is, especially considering that it was very windy on that day. I actually had to edit the audio quite a bit to mute most of the wind noise. There's still quite a bit in there. Another beautiful plunging cut here. There took me a moment to be like, oh yeah, it's still standing. Cut. These are always difficult. The edge alignment has to be really good to not disturb the bottles too much. That was very nice. He left just a slice of the bottom there. Oh, you would have had that too. Yeah, just needed a bit more speed there. Another nice thwart cut. And more double cuts. More Eric shenanigans. I was splitting it lengthwise. Wasting so much water, guys. I've seen lots of comments like that. Fancy looking plunging cut. Let me know if you like the commentary on this one. So if this makes you want to get a sword to join the epic battle against the hordes of plastic, there will be a link to Cult of Athena down below where you can find a lot of sharp stuff, as well as the page of Von Morfett, who is one of my patrons, and a craftsman who makes 
swords, axes, shields, various jewelry, a lot of stuff. So you can commission just about anything. Just ask him. Chances are he'll be able to make it. And he does some really nice work. He's a great guy too. So I would definitely suggest checking out his stuff. He's uh, located in Australia. Here are a few examples of his work. And he also sent me this copper axe here, which is really nice. I still haven't gotten around to hafting it, but eventually you'll see it tested. All right. That's it. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.